Hello everybody, this is Karma Kill the Cat, and welcome to your 15th or 16th, I'm not sure, Lua tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to, we're going to go over the I.O. library, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do for this tutorial is you're going to need to go to the folder that you have your Lua file saved in, and then you're going to need to create a new text file, name it whatever you want. Uh, I have one here, I named it data.txt. Uh, I don't know if you can see that with the window, my recording window, but I named it data.txt. It just needs to be in the same folder as the Lua file that you're writing the code in. Otherwise, it's harder to access. And we're going to be using this for the I.O. library. So, in our first Lua tutorial, we went over two functions that output text to the screen. We had our function print and we've gone over this many times we know what it does and then we also have io dot write so you will remember that io dot write does the same thing by default except that it doesn't add new lines and tabs to things it just prints what you input uh, the way you give it so if we wrote hello and then on a new line we had world these would be output on the same line whereas if you used print these would be output on different lines so we haven't used io.write much since that first tutorial and there's a reason for that and the main reason is for our purposes right now there's been no reason to use it print is more convenient for getting information and debugging which is what we've been using it for but now that we're going over the IO module, we can see what IO.write is really good for. And what IO.write is good for is outputting information to files. So to show this, we're going to introduce a new function in the IO library called IO.output. And this function just takes a string as a parameter. We're going to put data.txt. So what this function does is it takes the parameter, which is a file name as a string and it changes what's called the current input to that file so after this function is called with a valid file name all calls to io.write after this will output to the uh, this file instead of the standard output which is the uh, the console so until we change io.output again then all io.write calls will go to data.txt so let's save this actually we should uh, put io.read here so we save this then we go to our file and run it put our character in and we see we have hello and this was an empty file and to prove that I didn't do any camera tricks we'll save it call the file again close it and we get hello so let's just delete that for now so that's how io.output works. The next function we're going to go over is io.input. So we just change this. And we don't even have to change the parameter. So io.input does the opposite of io.output. It changes the current input of the Lua program to the file name and the parameter rather than changing the current output. So with this, io.write would still write to the console. But if we use io.read, and I'll go over the optional parameters for io.read in a minute. So let's set a string to io.read and we'll say star a. So there are several optional parameters you can give to io.read. They're all strings and we're gonna use star a for now but after I show you this we will go over the other ones. So let's save this file and now let's go to our data file and let's just put some things here. So just say words, not with a Z. Let's have some numbers. And we'll put it on separate lines. So now we can save this. And then we actually need to uh, print S. Now we can save, and remember, uh, print will still print to the console, as will io.write, because we've 
Uh, we don't have the current output changed. We only have the current input changed. So now if we run this, uh oh. Uh, yes, as I thought, this io.read does not work anymore. That is unfortunate. One sec. All right, I fixed it. You just have to replace io.read with an infinite loop that does absolutely nothing. So the reason that the io.read thing to end the to cause a pause at the end of the file so that the console window doesn't close is because when you use io.read to get input from the console, it has to wait because the console doesn't have any data to automatically read. But our data.txt file did, so it didn't have to wait for user input. So this will work just as well, but we can change it back in the end of the tutorial. So save this and run. And we get words, one, two, three, four, five, new line. So we have taken the data from our data.txt file. See, it says the same thing. And we've given it to our Lua file and then just printed it to the console. But say we only wanted to read one line from our file. We could change the parameter from io.read to star l instead of star a. Uh, just so you can remember, star a stands for all, and star l stands for line. So we save this, run it again, and we just get words. And I believe if we called it again, we would get the second line. Not sure, though. Yep, if we call it again, we get the second line. There's an iterator hidden in io.read that does that for us. But we don't need this. Uh, actually, let's do this to show our next example. And we use string there. And then let's use io.write now. And remember, io.write will still print to the console window because we haven't changed the current output. So io.write. And now if we save this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to get two lines of data from the file instead of one. And uh, what this star lowercase l parameter does, I left this out before, this gets input from the file line by line, but it doesn't... Uh, take new lines. So if we run this, this will show you. It uh, it doesn't add a new line because we're using io.write and using lowercase l. Even though in data.txt there is a new line here. So there's like a hidden backslash n in the file. We don't need to save that. So now let's change the parameters slightly to a capital L doesn't matter for the second one but why not so if we save this and run it again we get an error cool one sec alright I can't figure out why it's not working but it doesn't matter because this is obsolete the uppercase L there's a much better way to do this so there's also one more parameter for io.read and it's star a and that only reads numbers from the file so I'm sure you can figure that one out it just takes the numbers from the file and only take and only uh, reads those. So the next thing we're going to go over in the IO library is another use for the generic for loop. So let's get rid of this and we're going to create a generic for loop but we're going to use a different iterator function. So we're going to say for line in io.lines and we don't need a parameter like we do in pairs. Do and then we're going to print line and end. And we put a semicolon here just to make it clear. Remember that semicolons are optional in Lua, so you can have them if you're used to languages that use semicolons, but you don't need them. So if we save this and run it, it outputs everything just like star A did and just like uh, star capital L would have done, but I don't know why that's not working. They may have taken it out in the last version of Lua. So what io.lines does is it's an iterator that 
reads through the file line by line. So in a generic for loop like this, we go through the file line by line and it just grabs one line and in a for loop gives it to this variable and then we print that out. So this is a much better way of going through a file line by line and you do this instead of using the star l function or the star l parameter to io.read. So this is the cleaner and uh, I'd say easier way to do it. So the io.input and io.output functions are considered the simple io module. The complete io.module is slightly more complicated but not really. So we can get rid of this, we'll replace it with io.read and I will show you why in a second. So we'll also get rid of io.input and we're going to say f equals io.open and for the parameters we're going to give it data.txt our file again and obviously remember if you named your file something different then put in that name .txt instead of data and then we're going to have another string and we're just going to give the letter r which stands for read so io.open it's kind of like io.input but you're opening the file and then all the data in that file goes to this f variable so and you're also you also choose what mode to open the file in you can open it in open it in write mode which clears all the data from the file and then io.write will from then on write to that file and then if you put it in read mode then f the f variable gets all the data from the file and that can be read with io.read and something important to do when you're using the complete io module is to remember to do f colon close at the end so it doesn't uh, show up in blue because it doesn't know that f is part of the io module now but that's fine just know that this is a valid function and it's only not working because this uh, id isn't quite as complex as visual studio so the complete module is better because obviously we can close the file which allows which allows you to change input files midway through midway through the program so we could say f equals io.open and then give it a different input file if we wanted and also we can just use this io.read again and if you just close the file and you don't give it a new file to open then it'll go back to the standard output which is the console so with the uh, complex module we do need to change some things for example we can't say io.read we, we'd have to say uh, let's say s equals and we'd say f colon read and remember that the colon is the same thing as uh, the dot in C++ because what we're doing we're pretty much doing here is we're creating a class or a structure uh, this is this is just a big table that has all the IO module stuff and the, the data from the file in it so we say f colon read and then we can just say star a and that needs to be a string and then we can print s and this should work just like the uh, simple IO module did so if we run this we get words one two three four five new line and then you see io.read works again so another example of the complex io module is that you can have multiple files open at the same time so we'll let's say f2 equals io. Dot, actually this may not work let's create a new text file so we'll say new I don't know if you can see this again with the window but I'm just creating a new text file in the same folder that we had our other text file and I'm gonna call it data2.txt so now we have data and data2 I know you can see this so now let's say f2 equals io.open data2.txt and then instead for the mode instead of having read we have w for write and also instead of just printing s we're gonna say io dot write and let's just do something 
yeah, let's just do something to the input. We'll say io.write s and we'll just put hello at the end. And then we'll have f.close and oh, we need I forgot about this. f2 colon write because just like f colon read uh, when we open this file we're just given a big table that has this, all the functions from the IO module and all the data from data 2 well it's open and write so it gets all the data needed to write to data 2txt so we need to call write as a member of f2 so basically what we're doing here is we're just reading all the data from our data 1.txt file and then modifying it slightly we're just adding hello to the end we're not doing too much we're just modifying it and then writing it to our f2 file so now we say f dot close and f2 dot close and if we save this it should work it may not I've never tried doing this before so it didn't print anything and let's just put in the character instead of closing it to make sure it worked yep it worked words one two three four five new line hello and again just to prove that I'm not tricking you not sure why I would we can run it again and open data 2 again and you saw we deleted it and now it's back because we ran the program again so the last function we're gonna go over is pretty simple it's the file dot or io dot seek function it just you give it two parameters uh, let me just show you this while I tell you about it we can get rid of all this and we don't need this so we'll say x equals f colon seek and it takes two parameters the first is a string which is the mode you can either have the string set which starts the offset at the beginning of the file so uh, what this function does is you give it the position to start an offset at and then you give it the number of characters to offset and then it just offsets the current position by that amount so set the string set is the uh, beginning of the file so if you want to say offset five characters from the the beginning then you use that there's also cur which starts the offset from the current position in the file and then there's end which starts the offset at the end of the file not quite sure that I guess you could use negative values so you say you want to start five characters before the end of the file you'd say end negative five so that's the file dot seek function we don't need to run it it's pretty uh, self-explanatory and I th yeah that's all for this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll be going over the string library and also sorry for not posting tutorials in I think two weeks uh, uh, track and field just started at my school and that has taken up a lot more time than I thought it was thought it would so sorry about that but video should be back to weekly now so see you in the next tutorial